So when we build 48s in house, we start with a core. What I mean by we start with a core is we didn't tear the core down in front of you guys yesterday, but it was just like any other 48 core. Oh, it's on the uh, rack. So 48 core. Um, the clutches were actually really bad in this yesterday. I think they took the trash out. Um, this is mine. It's not very good. But anyways, it didn't look very good. The forwards, the directs um, were burned out. It was trashed at 70,000 miles. I don't know why, but man, it drove it like a fucking, drove it like a fucking man. <laughs> so, fuck it. So, we got our direct drum assembly done today. I have my tolerance, which I'm not explaining to you. So anyways, I have my tolerance. We're using a stock direct uh, apply piston. I used the billet one in the, uh, the silver truck. So I'm gonna try that. Got a new bushing installed as well. I'm running GPZ forwards and directs. It's gonna be a really nice trans. So assembly process on the trans is you can assemble them a hundred different ways. A lot of guys like to assemble them this way. A lot of guys like to build the overdrive sections first. I just, whatever piece comes first, I like to build. So direct drum is built. I have my clutch tolerance. I have my extra uh, clutch in here. Step down machine, step down clutch from Muldoon. Very great guy. I like Muldoon, we buy a lot of his products. Muldoon, full manual valve body as well. This is essentially Muldoon's rebuild kit. He has a really nice kit that he offers to his dealers. And I wanted to, this is the second time I tried it. It comes with a lot of nice stuff. The man really puts a lot of attention to detail in his transmission components. And that's why I like to rep his set. I like to run his products and you know, I haven't really built that many transmissions this year because we've been focusing on a lot of other things in the company. Um, so in his kit, he essentially sells you all the bearings and thrusts that you need. Um, sorry. Servos, uh, thrusts, shims, everything. Sonic's front. You get all my shafts and stuff from Muldoon as well. Uh, Muldoon's as well, too. We're trying to get set up with Sonic's at the current time, but Muldoon gets us a really good price format on uh, a lot of the transmission components so where we still have a lot of margins. So we're running a used 27 spline input shaft. This is one that I've had sitting on the shelf for a while. Um, we're gonna run it and see if it works. We'll see. Other than that, we have a new Sonics build intermediate. And we have a uh, Sonics standard size build output. So these are the thrusts from the 2006. That's on the rack. Wanted to show you guys. 70,000 miles on these thrusts. You can put rollers in them, you can do thrusts. There's only really two options. I've had really good luck with the thrust in these transmissions. Lock shifts are really hard, and that's what we're gonna do this thing. We're gonna beat fucking balls off of it. It's gonna eat ass. Like, yeah, we're gonna beat the shit out of it. So, other than that, like I said, Muldoon makes a really nice rebuild kit for all you guys that like to build 48s. This is the second time I've tried it. I usually get a lot of our components from Sonics and Suncoast and stuff like that. Uh, Muldoon makes a really, really, really nice kit and I wanted to do that on video for you guys that want to build 48 in-house um, or if you guys wanted to run one of our transmissions as well. So he sends you essentially everything you need, clutches, steels, forwards, directs, bevels, your bevel spring, your late 5.9 uh, bevel, or your late um, 48 RE bevel. You can use an early bevel just depends on your piston height on your forward apply piston. They make a 780 thousandths piston and then they make an 820 thousandths piston. Yesterday I was having a little bit of an issue with my forwards mic now. I have a tolerance that I use. They like to run five clutches in the forwards. I'm gonna run four this time. Uh, I guess four is plenty. The truck's only gonna make 800 horsepower and about 1,300 pounds of torque. My race truck trans is a little bit different. We have five clutches in the forwards and we have seven in the back drum. Uh, this year in the race truck, we killed a lot of transmissions because of the direct drum not applying fast enough. Um, so we tightened up the directs, still killed it. And essentially what happened on the band, is I kept overlooking the band. And if you smell that. Shit's stanky. It's 
smells like burnt clutches, doesn't it? Yep. But anyways, I kept putting in clutches in the direct drum while the drum was slowed down by this billet band. Well, the band was shot, and I kept overlooking it because it had a bunch of transmission fluid on it. As far as the band in this, we're gonna run either a rigid or we're gonna run the HD band. And this is a standard band that comes into a 48RE. I like to run this, or I like to run this. Big boy stuff, I like to run the, the billet band. So we're gonna assemble the transmission today. I'm gonna go over some key points and factors. I gotta sand down the pump here. This is the pump out of, this is the, uh, essentially this is, sorry, don't mind that old transmission fluid. We still gotta disassemble that clean one. This is the pump, 48RE pump. We're gonna sand this down. I use a very strategic um, stone. It's uh, my Mitsubishi stone. It actually flattens the surface on this. You can kind of see, it's not really finished all the way, but you can kind of see how I'm smoothing that out, making it true. Let's get our pump measurement as well here shortly. But this is the stone that I like to use. Really nice, you can kind of see. Anyways, I like to sand this down, kind of flatten it out. Make sure everything's true at 100%. You can kind of see where it's really not. Sand this down. And then obviously we'll mic it out here in a sec. Make sure it's within spec of the factory. Well, that's essentially what it'll look like for you guys when it's all settled and done. There's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of components that go into transmission building. What I mean by a lot of components that go into transmission building is there's so many factors, clutch tolerance, um, end play, proper pump, you know, shimming the pump properly. And there's just so many factors that lead into it. Uh, full mania valve body line pressure. Um, there's a lot of stuff. So we'll break it down step by step. I'm not gonna give you the tolerances for my transmission. I'm gonna show you the assembly process because there's a lot of backyard builders, as I mentioned before, that don't know what they're doing and they think they know what they're doing. But I was trained professionally at Suncoast in 2017. I actually went to Suncoast's class with John Muldoon is actually how I met John Muldoon and been a great friend of mine ever since and I've run his products ever since. We've sold 40, 50 of his valve bodies in the last couple of years. I'll be ready right 40, 50, isn't it? Quite a bit. I mean, I'll be done. 50 transmissions in the last two years, year and a half, two years, and then all the other guys that buy them for I'll buy them off the website and stuff too. But like I said, we got a great relationship with Suncoast and John and wanted to show you guys his kind of essentially his builder kit. Um, it's the same stuff that we inventory and we use for all of our builds. In the last couple transmissions I've built, I decided to try out his kit and it's been really nice. Um, we inventory a lot of clutches and steels on the wall, shims, everything that you need. Those are for customer builds that we do in-house. For this truck, I wanted to product in depth and in detail who we use. So we built the transmission, we set it up with our tolerances, our specs. Muldoon sets you up with the valve body, the clutches, the shims, essentially everything that you need as a kit for the guys that want to build the transmissions yourself or the guys that want to buy transmissions through an authorized professional builder such as us, Muldoon, Suncoast, Firepunk. Everybody makes a really good transmission. We all have failures. There is transmissions that are essentially giant brakes. What I mean by their giant brakes is these are all wearable components. The other giant brakes, as you see right here, these are the fastest wearing clutches in the transmission. These are Ray Bestis GPZs. These are the same ones I had in the blue truck, in the silver truck, the race truck. That's what I'm running currently right now. They're all the same. So look at my forward clutches right here. Let me get this out. I'm kind of kicking my ass today. This is a... A lot of guys like to soak the clutches, a lot of guys like to leave them in dry. You soak the clutches, you get it in. In my opinion, some guys like to check their measurements wet with wet clutches. You don't get a proper reading, tolerance reading, with fluid viscosity built up of a clutch box. So I like to do my measurements with the clutches dry, and that's about it. But we're gonna go over transmission components, assembly. Like I said, we have a core broke down for you guys. The direct drum is assembled, we went over our shims, the pump, essentially all of that, so let's get into it. Fuck you. Yeah. He's a 
process to like oh it's good Transmission building 101, always make sure your pump is in spot. Flat sanded and stoned this. Looks really nice. Clean it off really good. So we gotta put our new pump sealer in. For sure. The new pump sealer is gonna be. Wow! Okay, we're on set, bitches. Forward clutches, spec'd out, mic'd out. To my secret recipe. Direct drum clutches, spec'd out, mic'd out. To my recipe. You're gonna stack your direct drum and you're gonna put it over your forward clutches. You gotta line everything up. Of course, it's gonna be a pain in the ass when I'm on camera. Forwards, directs are set to go. Reverse drum or gear band, whatever you want to call it. Now we're putting our shims in. So when you shim this out, your specification needs to be between, I like to have them at like, sometimes I have to look at the book. Um, I think I have this one set up, probably 40 or 50, so I'm probably like 30 or 40 thousand on input. I'll show you what I mean by input on the intermediate shaft. So planetary drive, the loop plan to drop. Now we're gonna do some fucking quick math. You ready? It's been a while since we've done quick math. Quick math. Quick math, bro. Okay, shim in, plan to drop. This bad boy out. Give it a little bit of star sauce. Shins are good to go. We'll put this bitch back together. Go. Reaction shell. Lower planetary. And we're just gonna disassemble this real quick so you guys understand. Planet. Shell. Now, sometimes you can weld the planets on these. And what I mean by weld the planets is I take weld my planets on my big boy trans. And I'm not gonna do that on this because the truck makes 13 to 1400 horsepower at that. In my Pro Street truck, which does like 2,500 to 3,000 foot-pounds of torque, I use these. I use the TIG weld and planetary drives. I TIG weld these over there in fabrication land. It's pretty cool, but I'm not going to TIG weld these. Planetary drive failure in an 800 horsepower truck is unheard of. And if you do break the planets, you're probably stuck in your fucking Nefson's fucking mud hole, fucking doing reverse to drive fucking burnouts. That's probably the only way you would fuck up the planet in a truck that's under a thousand horsepower. So anyways, let's assemble. Quick math, satisfying part, here we go. Sonics build intermediate shaft. Okay, good, seated, nice, planetary. We're gonna set the, sorry, the reaction shell in the planetary. Now we're gonna grab our third bad boy right here. You can see our plastic retainer, looks nice. Sometimes these measure out and sometimes they don't measure out. So we need to use a smaller shim because we are not seating properly where our snap ring is. So now we're gonna make an adjustment for that. So we're gonna go to preferably a thinner thrust uh, so that can fit in there because, I don't know. Maybe I just had to give it a little smack. So there you go, now we're actually specced out. Uh, we are recessed in there, but as you've seen, there wasn't that recessed area to put the snap ring. So sometimes you can get thinner, uh, thicker thrust that'll cause the planetary sounds to stack out properly where your snap ring goes. So anyways, now that that's good, we will put our snap ring on this. Then we're gonna measure it out. Funny. Then we're gonna take this. Ooh, this might be too tight. You're gonna measure right here with a feeler gauge. That's what the book recommends you do is six to 48 thousandths in here with the feeler gauge. I have my tolerance that I like to use. Um, I'm not gonna show that with you guys because that costs money. So what we will do, the tighter the better. Let's just say that. <laughs> 
Tighter the better, right? Nobody likes to fuck loose pussy, right? <laughs> Probably does. Nasty motherfucker. Sicko. Okay, so we're gonna go to the lowest. We're at 6,000. I might have to spin this bad boy up. Good to go. Get this back. Okay, so now we have our forwards directs, our intermediate section complete. I'm going to get drunk for the weekend. I'm going to fuck bad bitches and get money. So we'll see you guys next week. So we're back again. Good weekend. Fucking bitches getting money, drinking alcohol. <laughs> Seriously though, we're back. So we're doing the overdrive disassembly today. Uh, getting ready to go wash this out with some brake clean waiting on in advance. Um, sorry, you gonna itch? Whoa, whoa. Okay, forwards, directs, pump is all assembled. I do a specialty pump mod in all my 48 transmissions. And I'm not going to show you guys that because you can figure it out on yourself. So anyways, I did my pump modification. We have a 27 spline in this one shaft. Um, so close. So I'm gonna show you how to air check these. Uh, essentially, it's pretty cool. You have flow on the stator and then you have flow on the input and then you have flow on the forwards that are direct. Essentially. So right under here, you're gonna see four little holes and you can see the freeze plugs essentially right here. One, two, three, four. So right here is gonna be essentially stator flow. I forgot which one that is. This is gonna be locked up. This is gonna be forwards or directs, one of the two. I haven't, it's been so long since I've done this, so don't beat me up over it. But either way, just know it feels better. <laughs> so you're gonna see this. This is gonna, right here, essentially this is air checking the stator across where you get flowed and fluid pathage, basically across from here. So then right here, you're gonna have input, which is, this is controlled the lockup circuit. You can see it kind of blow my thumb off. That means the two Teflons have sealed that. There's no cross lift right there. That's good. Now, we're gonna move to the next port. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. All right. This right here is the forwards. You can see that our bevel and our forward bill to apply. We don't have forward bill to apply, sorry. Forward apply is Gucci. Actually, this is our direct. What the fuck am I doing? This is a direct drum right here. Let's apply in our direct drum. This is gonna apply our forwards. No, that's the direct drum. Either way, don't beat me up over it, but I forgot. Either way, it air checks out. So, <laughs> probably the biggest retard moment of my career in there. <laughs> Other than that, our forward directs pump. Everything is Teflon. Everything seals up. Everything is Gucci. Move on to that. Now, today we're going to be focusing on our overdrive direct section. Our overdrive direct section essentially is your overdrive directs are suppressed in here with this spring. I got to clean a little bit of this out with some brake clean real quick, but I'm going to show you guys. This is our overdrive section. So our overdrive section assembled is your overdrive brakes which we'll assemble that here shortly. We're gonna have our intermediate shaft go right here, but I need to wash this out with uh, brake clean first. Anyways, I'm gonna show you in this kit. This is a really nice kit, as we explained before from John Muldoon. This is a really, really nice kit I wanted to show you for the guys that wanna build your transmissions yourselves. Uh, Muldoon's kit comes with a lot of nice components. And I've been a real big fan of Muldoon since 2018 when I met him down at Suncoast and wrapped his set ever since. He's been a great guy. He's always been there for us. How many valve bodies think we've sold from Muldoon? 40, 50? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I've sold quite a few of them just to customers outside of the state. Yeah, and every transmission that we have is essentially a full manual, so that's what they get. All right, so here is our bearing kit, Kayo bearing kit. And when I wash up the overdrive section over there, when my brake clean shows up, and we'll show you guys what these bearings do. You kind of need to replace these bearings every time. Um, really nice kit though. And then we will assemble the overdrive direct section and then we will begin assembling on the transmission. Piston retainer to the case. 
as you've seen, I just torqued that to the front section of the case, 13 foot pounds. Very what everybody torques them to. Always go in with a lot of loop. I like to use the uh, the snap on lip seal screwdriver. essential upgrade if you're gonna build fucking transmissions you gotta have the fucking components and there's some stuff that I still don't have it takes a little bit of time to fucking hit all of them this is my lip seal driver from snap-on every single transmission I've ever built I've used this one of the greatest investments I've ever got I got a whole kit over there I got longs and shorts but I really like this one it's one of my favorite parts oh So the lip seal driver is essentially like this. If you come in, you can kind of zoom and see what the lip seal driver does. It allows you to get into the piston bore right here. It allows you to get kind of somewhat started. And then you pretty much just kind of run it across. So there we go. Got it essentially started. Now I'm gonna run this lip seal driver all the way around it. Don't ever hesitate not putting a lot of lube on this. Because if you roll this, which I've done before, um, you will blow out the lip seal and then you cook your overdrive direct. That sucks thing. So don't do that. Other than that, that's, that's about it for that. Um, overdrive direct. Right here, 70,000 miles. They look all right. Not terrible. Looks like we reuse our bottom plate. Into our top plate. I'm gonna suck a little wash. Look at that, dude. Get out of here, you yard pimps. I love that fucking crawfish motherfucker. Whoa. I forgot his name. Whoa! <laughs> you got a uh, camera? Alright, so I usually like to put these in the parts washer, but kind of Riley's doing the Duramax stuff today, so break for you to work for today. I'm going to inspect the planets a little bit here and kind of see what we got. They look really good actually. Um, Alright, we're back. So, in our nice, our really nice small zooms kit that we got. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay, so in the our nice Revo kit, this essentially takes this bad one off. As you can see, it's a little fucking chopped up. Essentially, it's a new one. That's all it is. It's a new. One. See the heat spots in there? That motherfucker. He was definitely listening to some fucking Van Halen pulling his fucking dozer. The fucking, <laughs> where the fucking? He was pulling his dozer. <laughs> what? Fred, <laughs> going to pack cola. With his fucking, that guy that we bought this truck from. I hope you watch this video. By the way, you old fuck. Oh, oh my. Whoa. All right. Okay, so now that we have all of our proper, don't mind that, that's just very clean. Usually let these sit in the parts washer for a long period of time, but. Sorry, buddy, I'm gonna have to call you later. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, I, I'll call you in a sec! <laughs> That's my Dan. That's my boy. Okay, so billet overdrive, or billet output, sorry. We're gonna put our thrust in. It's pretty easy to do. It takes a real dipshit not to put one of these in. Gucci, overdrive. Sometimes you gotta beat the fucking balls off this motherfucker. <laughs> Put this on. This might not be the proper way to do it, but. I like to. <laughs> All right, we're good. 
good. Almost. You're supposed to put that on with a press button. Wow! Alright, um... Okay, so now that's on. Beautiful, that is fucking... Oh! Whoa! Whoa. Alright, motherfucker. <laughs> Get in there, you son of a bitch. Delicious cherry. Yeah. I still got it. Yep. <laughs> stuff works like a charm. <laughs> I love that stuff. We need to make another one of these. <laughs> yeah, we do. Let's come out with a new flavor. <laughs> we should. Uh, Star Blast. <laughs> Star Blast. <laughs> that would be a good one. Blueberry. Blueberry dum dum. Cheese. Fucking cheese flavor. Cheese flavor. <laughs> Okay, now that we have that in, we're gonna build our overdrive. Converter doesn't show up till Thursday. Kind of bummed. Oh, about damn. That. Did it just ship out today? Yeah, finally did. <clears throat> Whoa. I guess I could just put these in a fucking thing, but I don't want them being all lazy today. Now that we have our overdrive directs, in place, now we're gonna press this back on. We have all of our new bearings. Buddy! Alright, so pressed out the uh, stock input or billet output. As you can see, I've done, I think this is from the last two years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, 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 Inside, we have our retainer, two retainers. Uh, we're gonna snap it back in. Make sure you guys always put your alignment tool back in, otherwise, you'll sit there and fight it when you put your intermediate shaft in. Just a little friendly advice. I will help you with that because nobody likes to do that. Okay, top retainer in. Bottom retainer in, overdrive directs pressed in, rebuilt, new bearings all the way around, billet output. Gonna keep the original bearing on the bottom because it's got low mileage. Should be okay, we're gonna release this now. Should be good, I like to give it a little tap. Just a little reassurance. essentially allows you to, when you drop in your planetary drive and we show you in the next video, the assembly process, pretty much ready to go. So, that right there is essentially the assembly on the three most important factors on a 48, forward, to direct, your 
your intermediate uh, planetary tolerance and your overdrive, uh, which we measured that essentially when I do the overdrive section. Like, essentially do the overdrive section for you guys really quick. Take this shim out. Put this right here. It's a little cheap way I have to do it. Some of my buddies have built transmissions. They have a hole in their table. Take this bad motherfucker. A little spin. All right. Uh -oh. As you can see, I just bought the snap ring. So the snap ring was a little pushed over to the side. But essentially, this that uh, riding on the bearing right now, which is Gucci. That's what you want. So now we'll stop that. Flip this upside down. And over. Now we're going to do our overdrive brakes in the transmission. These are really easy. Like, really fucking easy. Especially the measurement. Um, how many measure our tolerances on that? So we'll do the tolerances off the camera. Spiked out, respect out for Gucci. Spiked during tolerance. Now we're putting in our Raybestos overdrive brakes. Which is the fa essentially the fastest wearing clutch in the entire transmission. All black looks good, huh? Just assembled our overdrive section, checked it out, put our overdrive brakes in, our overdrive directs with our new bearings, our Toyota bearings. Now I've essentially put the overdrive housing on the back end of the transmission. This is all spec'd out, this is all happy. My specs that I like. Next week, oh, I'm sorry, not next week. Next episode, we will, uh, the front section of the case, your servos, your intermediate servo, uh, and we'll go from there. So we'll wrap it up with that. Okay, so we're back. We have the overdrive section assembled. We have our reverse, our lower sprag in. We got our servos in. Lower reverse retainer, so in the Muldoon's kit, when you run his full manual kit, he has a secondary spring. And there's a little modification that you do, essentially to the servo, whatever you want to call it. Guys call it all sorts of different things, they call that. Have a billet front uh, accumulator here, servos, uh, the best of everything, essentially. Um, so yeah, uh, we put a 4.4 lever in, so stock 48s essentially have been coming with stock, like, or 5.0 levers. Like the 5.0 for big power lock shifts. I really like to run the 4.4. I think it's a 4.2. Um, it just applies the van in not such an aggressive way as the 5.0. It's really hard on cracking cases. I cracked the case on my blue truck with a 5.0 lever and a lot of line pressure. Um, the 5.0 to the 4.2 uh, lever is just a different band applies. And how much uh, is applying on the band in a short period of time. Um, so you can have more apply and you can have less apply. So 4.2 is less apply. Um, essentially a 5.0 is more aggressive apply to the band to slow down the direct drum when it applies with direct clutches. That's what essentially what the band does on the servos right here. Is it essentially pressures up, as you can see. I'll kind of explain this to you guys. The servo design is actually... Oh, you're good. The servo design is actually really cool. So this is how you air check it. Obviously you always want to air check it. Reverse band right here, third gear band, whatever you want to call it. You're gonna see this pressure up. Right there. You're gonna see this piston shoot out. Which is gonna squeeze the lower band on the, the lower reverse band. So Muldoon's valve body essentially has lower reverse band applied, which essentially slows down the rotating mass on the planetary drive to where you don't need a billet direct drum. He's had really good luck for that for a long period of time with the stock drum. Um, which is really cool. So your front band essentially slows down your direct drum up there, which we're getting ready to assemble here shortly. By squeezing this, you're gonna see this shoot out, and it's gonna squeeze the band for a short period of time. And then it's gonna apply, and then it's gonna smoke the, uh, well, smack the direct drum clutches, essentially. So, I haven't really 
really done a demonstration, so don't beat me up over it too bad on the transmission stuff. I just know the stuff by memory of what works and what doesn't. So today we're going to be assembling the upper part of the case and we're going to be miking out end play. We're going to be putting in our lower reverse drum. As you can see down here, this is our sprag. Some guys like to modify the sprag. They like to put a bolt here and then they like to put a bolt here and then they like to put a bolt here as a sprag retainer. I don't even fuck with any of that. The only time I've ever had a sprag blow out is when I overheated the trans and I got hot lapped. So anyway, so we're going to put this in. I gotta put my band on. Excuse me. I'm gonna run the original band that's actually in the truck. I came from the truck when we bought it because it's got 70,000 miles. A lot of guys like to run a new band. You run a new band, you wanna run it a little bit tighter because uh, he's stretch. So this band's pretty essentially already stretched. It's good to go. Uh, really doesn't need anything else. Uh, so yeah, uh, that worked out really nice. So now we're gonna show you guys the lower supply. I'm gonna drop this down in here. It's kind of a process, kinda of gotta roll it around. And it just rolls right in there, really nice like like that. You can see where your third, or your lower, um, your anchor point right here. Leave that loose. I have tolerances that I set it at. Everybody has their own tolerances. Um, what I mean by tolerance is, is like your, uh, your adjustment on your bands. The adjustment on your bands is rated in inch pounds essentially really cool. Um, new thrust, obviously, uh, supplied with uh, the Muldoon rebuild kit. Really nice to help. Guy knows his stuff. He likes it. Alright, anyway, we're going to put our thrust in. I like to put this in the 12 o'clock position. I really don't like to put it in the oiling port. Not necessarily the oiling port, it's the... Uh... Good. Got a little bit of play and travel. For Gucci. Okay, next up is our planetary drive which we assembled in front of you guys and we mic'd out. This is a Sonics billet intermediate shaft. Do not ever forget about this retainer ring right here when you put in an aftermarket intermediate shaft. It is not fucking good. Just a heads up. Anyways, now we're going to assemble this in. That. Give it a nice little spin. Good. So yesterday, as I told you guys, when you do your overdrive section, you need to have your alignment tool in the overdrives. Otherwise, that will fight you for fucking years. So your overdrive section needs this alignment tool, no matter what. Otherwise, you'll sit there and you'll try to stab in your intermediate shaft and your planetary drive, and you'll be like, why the fuck's it not going in? Well, the bottom splines are not aligned. And this, when it goes in with your aftermarket intermediate shaft and your planetary drive, is not aligning and you're jamming it in there. Just a little word of advice. I fought that, so... One of the first transmissions ever built. So, whatever I can do to help you out. Anyway, alright. Now we are going to move on to the next step. The next step, obviously, we air check our pump, our direct, everything. So I'm going to put a little bit more lube on this. Teflon. These Teflons like to tear if you don't lube them. And they tear, they cause a world of fucking problems. What I mean by a world of fucking problems. Is one of the first transmissions I also built, I tore a Teflon on this. So I put the truck in first gear, it would essentially lock the converter. <laughs> Shut the truck up. So always air check your Teflons and always air check it when it's in the case. So, as far as your teddy bear washer goes, these are your teddy bear washers. You have three different selectives. So this trans is going to be pretty tight, so we really don't need a really thick teddy bear washer, if that makes sense. You kind of want to run a thin, almost a thin, or kind of a mediocre one. And I've been pretty good at setting these up, so I'm going to run a thin just to see how it goes at first. Um, always put the step down, the lip down in the teddy bear washer. 
I'm kind of explain this to you in a sec. Lube this up so this doesn't come out. It's right here in this groove, okay? So anyways, we're good there. I'm gonna stack back out our red gum. Delicious cherry. A little bit of pre-lube love. So a little, uh, a little tip for you guys. When you put your forwards in your directs on your planetary drive, this has to be centered to the intermediate shaft. What I mean by centered to the intermediate shaft is that 12 o'clock, it goes back to center of the fucking clock. 6 o'clock, it goes back. 9 o'clock, it goes back. 3 o'clock, it goes back. That means it's perfectly seated and it's properly in there. You're welcome. Okay, so now we're going to put in our pump gasket. Um, nine times out of ten, I get these A's in the hole. It's because I've done so many of them. Okay. Okay, so on this transmission, I'm going to run a rigid band. This is a used one. I like to run these. Nine times out of ten, I like to run the HD band. This is the HD band, which works just as good. I use these in a lot of customer builds. Um, like I said, they, they do really good. Um, the fire pump guys literally go, they the, I mean, they went stupid fast on one of these. The rigid bands, I just, I'm a big fan of. I like them because they're easy to adjust and they are very straightforward. This is an old school, I don't know who makes this one. I've had this one for a while. So I am kind of using a couple of used components on mine. It's my trans, but... Always leave that just a little bit, give it a little bit of love. That motherfucker spins around in there and it really doesn't get any love for a little bit. Always like to soak the bands. It's kind of a important aspect to do. Some guys like to let them soak for fucking 24 hours. It's like days to fuck. <laughs> Alright, so now we're gonna put in our pump. We're gonna have to lube up this. These are uh, kind of a very important factor as well. Lubing up the pump. Four. This makes it a lot easier when it sets back in there. When you put new bushings in your direct drum and your uh, pump and stuff like that, sometimes they're a little bit tighter to press in. All at once, but... Cool. Okay. So we're looped up, ready to go there. We have our new pump, remanufactured pump essentially that we stoned on the table for you guys. New seal, 27 stator from Sunco's. Painted this in a nice high tent black, so it looks really good. Um, I do a little modification to the pump here that's in there. Always forget your selective. Don't ever forget about that. Give this a little bit of chance. Okay. We're gonna put this in. Let's just see how out this thing is. 
I remember, so it's probably gonna have a lot of end play because I used really thin selective shims, if that makes sense. So when you use thin shims, Check your end plate, usually pry up on the planetary drive right here. That's not good at all. Whoa. Actually, it's yeah, 105 that way. No bueno. What's up? What up? Now that we quick intermission of writing. Remember that I used a thin selective behind the input shaft and I have really thin selectives behind the pump and on the forward to the direct. So we can tighten that up significantly a lot by using our selective here. We're gonna use a thick selective, which will probably tighten up probably about 40, 50 thou. And then I'm gonna use a different thin, so watch this. This happens all the time in the transmission building industry. Like you don't get a perfect measurement right away. This is where you wanna be your end play wants to be a really good number. selective that we chose. So that's going to put us at 75,000 doing that. Which in all reality, is in spec, but it's not. That's not for something like this. It's not in a competition spec. Now, this is a thin selective. the band play. Secondary shim on the direct drum. We had a 57 thousandths selective and we went to a right around an 80 thousandths, so we took out about 30 thousandths. 
We're at zero right now. We're gonna do an end play. We are at oh, wow. 51 thousandths, which is pretty good. That's where I want to keep it. 40 to 50 thousandths is my secretive number. Might be, might not be. I don't know. I usually like to have them at 110 thou. So. Can't give away the recipe though. Yeah, yeah, no, I can't give away the recipe. So 50 thou. I'm at. I'm in my spec at least. So yeah. Anything between 35 to 85 thousandths is where you want to be. <coughs> Nobody likes loose stuff though. Time to adjust the bands. Front band, reverse band. You guys can figure out your own tolerances, but yeah. Bands adjusted. Okay, take two. John Muldoon's full menu valve body. We just adjusted our bands, front and rear. So just a little something that I want you guys to see really quick. This is a different rooster comb than what we are going to use. We're using a late 48 rooster comb as you can see. The late 48 rooster comb has two slots right there. I'm not sure what exactly this one is, but this is probably an older model one. So anyways, John makes a really nice full menu valve body and this is the sauce. So we're going to change out the rooster comb, so enjoy. Converter has arrived. This is from Suncoast 27618 4748RE 19 3D, so three discs, essentially a triple disc converter. So now that we have the converter, we are getting ready to stab this bad boy for you guys. Bill of Flex Blade is in. Starbuck and I are touching up all the wiring as we speak right now. Police in tank pump. 10 mil pump, auxiliary fuel heated and return with the fuel bowl delete. So this isn't the turbo we were running, this is just a temporary turbo. So we didn't really show you guys anything about this. This is a force induction, it's 47270, or no, it's a 72, excuse me, it's 472-8790 on a T4. Um, I'm waiting for the FI version, which is the force induction version a little bit better upgrade seven blade with the t51 mod so the t51 mod essentially has a cover a modification to the cover that's what makes it cooler i guess we're gonna verify which turbo makes more power either this 728790 or the 728790 the tdi or the uh, force induction version other than that the engine is essentially wrapped up. We got the turbocharger in place. We got our orange downpipe in, doing bypass, valve covers on. Essentially the engine's done. Gotta put a battery in and wire that up for you guys. And this baby's ready to party. So the plan is to have it running here shortly. Trans is in. So let's see how it goes. 